stop lights, no traffic jams, no road rage. If your ideal road trip involves getting way off the beaten track then this is the drive for you. Canada's only all-season public road to cross the Arctic Circle, the Dempster Highway, is 740 kilometers, 458 miles, of unpaved road that traverses some of the most beautiful scenery on the planet. It starts near Dawson City and heads due north to Anubik in the Northwest Territories. Dramatic tundra landscapes, mountain ranges and abundant wildlife are all part of the Dempster experience. Early summer brings a variety of young animals, midsummer heralds long days under the midnight sun, while late summer visitors are treated to vivid crimson and gold tundra vegetation. Our home then. The Dempster Highway passes through a land of extremes. Yet, far from being an uninhabited wasteland, it has been home to humans since the end of the last ice age. Archaeologists have identified over 90 prehistoric sites along the Dempster. On the evidence of stone tool fragments found near Rock River in the North Fork Pass, prehistoric use of this area spans thousands of years. Bison and caribou were hunted by these early peoples and possibly, at the end of the Ice Age, mammoth and horse as well. Patterns of land use indicate a history of hunting that has continued virtually unchanged to the present day. The first contact with Euro-Canadians was made in 1839 with Robert Bell of the Hudson's Bay Company. In the early 1800s, three Athapascan-speaking groups occupied the land, the Han, centered around the Yukon River, the Tetlitgitchen on the upper Peel River and the Dugdugitchen on the upper Porcupine River. Geographical and cultural boundaries were relatively fluid although there was a strong association with commonly used land. These people were great travelers, moving throughout the area along well-established trade and hunting routes. You are traveling one of them today. Our home now. The Gunchen were, and many still are, subsistence hunters who lived in family groups and semi-permanent settlements, moving on annual cycles to hunt, fish and pick berries. Only in the last 50 years or so have permanent communities been established. While the archaeological record gives us some insight into their lives, the strong oral tradition of the Gachin peoples gives us their own history. Place names are one means of using the landscape to record that history and can be reminders of stories that are passed from generation to generation. That Zahaikan, Caribou Place, Creek, crosses the Dempster Highway north of the Arctic Circle. That Zahaikan is the Gwich'in word for caribou and refers to the porcupine caribou herd migration. Hunters from northern communities in Yukon and the Northwest Territories are still drawn here for the annual harvest. The Arctic Circle You have reached the Arctic Circle, an imaginary line around our planet at 66 degrees 33 north latitude. It marks the southern limits of the Arctic, land of the midnight sun. The line is actually the edge of a band of 24-hour sunlight that stretches from the North Pole to here at midnight on June 21st, the longest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. Six months later, on the shortest day, it is the edge of a huge shadow that blankets the Arctic. On June 21st, you would not see the sunset here, on December 21st, you would not see it rise. As you go farther north, the number of days that this happens increases. At the North Pole itself, the sun does not set for six months, from the spring equinox to the fall equinox. For the next six months, the sun does not rise. These seasonal extremes are due to the 23 degrees tilt in the Earth's axis. As the Earth circles the Sun, the Arctic is alternately tipped toward and away from its influence at different times of the year. Although the Arctic Circle can be located, it cannot be properly observed from the Earth's surface. This is the result of sunlight passing through the atmosphere. Gases in the atmosphere act like a giant lens to refract or bend the Sun's rays, making it appear higher than it really is. For this reason, the midnight sun can be seen from places like the top of the dome near Dawson, well south of the Arctic Circle. Defined by the sun. The main physical characteristics of the Arctic are the extreme differences between the seasons, and the low levels of solar energy. Because of the Earth's curve, sunlight strikes the Arctic at a different angle than nearer the equator and the energy within those rays is spread over a larger area. This lowers the amount of available heat. Solar energy is also lost when rays bounce off of the atmosphere and still more is absorbed by the greater distance it must travel through the atmosphere. When the ground is covered with snow and ice, a highly reflective surface, up to 80% of this solar energy is reflected back into space. 
If it were not for warmth redistributed from other part of the Earth by air movements and ocean currents, Arctic winters would be even colder than they are now. By summer, however, as much solar energy is received in one 24-hour sunlight period as is received at the equator during its 12-hour day. Plant growth is greatly enhanced during the brief Arctic summer. In the far north, on days in which the sun rises and sets, it does so at a shallow angle to the horizon. This makes for long periods of dawn and dusk, resulting in summer days that appear to be longer than winter nights. Summer visitors to subarctic destinations like Anchorage, Whitehorse, and Yellowknife delight in the experience known as White Nights, when it is possible to read at midnight by natural light. The Arctic Circle is one of the two polar circles, and the most northerly of the five major circles of latitude as shown on maps of Earth. Its southern equivalent is the Antarctic Circle. The Arctic Circle marks the southernmost latitude at which, on the December solstice, the shortest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, the sun will not rise all day, and on the June solstice, the longest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, the sun will not set. These phenomena are referred to as polar night and midnight sun respectively, and the further north one progresses, the more pronounced these effects become. For example, in the Russian port city of Murmansk, just 3 degree above the Arctic Circle, the sun does not rise for 40 successive days in midwinter. Its latitude depends on the Earth's axial tilt, which fluctuates within a margin of more than 2 degree over a 41,000 year period, owing to tidal forces resulting from the orbit of the Moon. Consequently, the Arctic Circle is currently drifting northwards at a speed of about 14.5 meters, 48 feet, per year. The Arctic Circle is the southernmost latitude in the Northern Hemisphere at which the center of the Sun can remain continuously above or below the horizon for 24 hours, as a result, at least once each year at any location within the Arctic Circle the center of the Sun is visible at local midnight, and at least once the center is not visible at local noon. Directly on the Arctic Circle these events occur, in principle, exactly once per year, at the June and December solstices, respectively. However, because of atmospheric refraction and mirages, and also because the sun appears as a disk and not a point, part of the midnight sun may be seen on the night of the northern summer solstice up to about 50 minutes, 90 kilometers, 56 miles, south of the Arctic Circle. Similarly, on the day of the northern winter solstice, part of the sun may be seen up to about 50 north of the Arctic Circle. That is true at sea level, those limits increase with elevation above sea level, although in mountainous regions there is often no direct view of the true horizon. 